YouTube, me, y'all know who it is, man. It's your boy, Big One, man. And I'm back in the cut with another reaction video for y'all. So, look, I told y'all I'm really trying to get into this UK shit for real. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to study them niggas over there, you feel me? Because, I, you know what I'm saying? I want to study some more shit besides America. Like, damn, let me, you feel me? Let me, you know what I'm saying? Jump countries and shit. So, look, we finna check out the Daily War in Northwest London. HRB versus SSK. Uh... I'm guessing it's like a North, a North versus West side type shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's say North dash West London. So we finna check it out and see though. But if you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. Click that bell to be notified when I'm uploading a video. Follow me on all my social media, man. Link to the description down below. Hey, y'all hit me up on my Instagram. Send me links of drill rappers I can check out. What type of music y'all want to see me react to. Type of pranks y'all want me to do. Challenges and everything, man. You know what I'm saying? 2023, we just on a whole nother level. A whole nother grind, man. Um... Further ado, let's check it out. Let's check out this daily war in Northwest London. In 2022, nowhere in London has been more popping than Northwest and West London. Probably the three most popping artists in London right now are coming out of West London, being Diggity, Central C, and Fredo. And Northwest London recently has got a sudden burst okay, of so Central C, okay. from that side of the city, who are definitely looking to be in that list soon. But a big reason due to the big spotlight on that side of London is due to what's happening on the streets. Recently, Northwest London has been a war zone from Camden to Kensington to Brent, but today they don't come outside, to stay inside. Look, stay inside, don't come outside. <laughs> from Camden to Kensington to Brent, but today we'll be getting into a feud between two estates that are so close together that you can literally cross territories in a two minute drive. Let's get into this video. Shout the kid nerd for the video, man. Guys, before I get into this video, I want all you guys to check out my song of the week from an artist I've been tapped into a lot recently. So much that I'm giving away a PS5 to a random subscriber. Who comments ah, the letters KN on his latest track called Nostalgia. Be sure to be posted on my Instagram in the description to find out the winner. The link to the music video will also be at the top of the description. Yeah. Yeah. So let's take it back to the 2000s, when Northwest London was in the peak of one of the most deadly gang wars in London history, between two neighbouring areas called Stonebridge and Church Road, and this war literally consumed the whole borough of Brent. During the 2000s, different estates inside and even outside of Brent would pick sides between Stonebridge and Church Road, leaving family and friends divided between the estates they live on. In this time period, the crime got so bad in Stonebridge specifically the uk government had to evacuate residents of the stonebridge estate knock down his flats and rebuild the area with new modern homes and apartments but many residents of the stonebridge estate wouldn't be moved too far from home to only less than 15 minutes away to an estate called south kilburn an area nearly if not as bad as stonebridge south kilburn started inheriting the beef between stonebridge and church road and just how south kilburn inherited stonebridge's beef other estates started living Linking up with Church Road, one specifically being in a state less than three minutes from South Kilburn called Mozart Estate. Mozart Estate had been having some back and forth issues with South Kilburn at the time, but it wasn't always like this. South Kilburn and Mozart Estate used to be on good terms back in the day, with both estates literally being minutes in walking distance. A lot of kids from both Mozart and South Kilburn went to school with each other, played with each other growing up, and even made money together. But that last thing was a big reason to do with their issues. Around the early 2000s, Northwest London was a popular spot for crack cocaine users, with Mozart Estate being dubbed Crack City, and South Kilburn being a known spot for drug dealing activity. But with both estates being so close together, while both heavy in the drug game, spouse of money issues and jealousy started destroying the relationship between both areas. As time that was about money. situations started popping off between the two, and stuff started getting... It did always about money or <clears throat> or a female they mess up 
cliques and groups and shit. Syria. Around these times in the late 2000s to early 2010s, Northwest and West London was a very dangerous place. Back and forth shootings were occurring. We got the static in. And with most of the surrounding area. Oh, yeah. As time went by, a situation started popping off between the two, and stuff started getting more serious. Around these times in the late 2000s to early 2010s, Northwest and West London was a very dangerous place. Back and forth shootings were occurring, with most of the surrounding areas being divided. These times, gangs in Northwest were starting to heavily rep colours, with South Kilburn's side allied with a few other gangs in the area, including Stonebridge, were wearing blue bandanas and flags, while Mozart's gang Gang HRB and a couple other estates were repping red colours. The war was now turning into a London version of Bloods and Crips. Colours were starting to be a big issue in the area. That people were starting to get attacked, literally just for wearing the wrong colour at the wrong place. English football player Raheem Sterling even talked about how he was living in the area at the time. Sterling lived in an estate called the St. Raff's Estate during this time. An estate linked to the Mozart Estate, an area which was Bloods. But Sterling had the time was playing for the QPR youth team who plays with a blue top so even he said while he was leaving his house and returning from training or games he would have to wear a hoodie or a jumper over his kit because he couldn't wear blue in his area in the early 2010s damn started to be more active in the damn so they on some shit down there like if you living in the in the in the red territory you can't wear blue at all or if you live in blue Excuse me, y'all. If you live in blue territory, you can't wear blue. I mean, red at all. Damn, that's crazy. They really like that up there. A lot of y'all down here in America can last in a place like that down there. <laughs> Music scene. A rapper from Stonebridge called K. Cole was already making some serious noise on the scene, even being one of the biggest rappers coming out of London in the late 2000s. A couple South Kilburn members started jumping on music as well, called Cowboy and Justo, dropping a few videos like one called It Ain't a Secret back in 2011. Not long after this release, a rapper from the HRB side dropped a remix to the song using the same beat, title and flow of the song called It Ain't a Secret, and this song blew up really shining a big spotlight on the rapper Boss Billy and his gang HRB. Then on June the 6th, 2011, another HRB rapper called Ratlin dropped probably one of the biggest UK rap songs to come out that year with his song called Messiah, which everyone all around London was bumping at the time. And HRB was really starting to become talk of the town in West London. But I ain't gonna lie, y'all niggas ugly as fuck. <laughs> Oh um, uh, my! Hey, you can tell y'all niggas came from there for real, for real, bro. And the music, the war on the streets was as bad as ever. In mid-September of 2011, there were several reports in a few days of back and forth situations happening on both Mozart Estate and South Kilburn. Someone was believed to have been chased in South Kilburn. Next day, three suspected members of the South Kilburn gang rode their bicycles to Mozart Estate. When they got there, they saw a crowd of boys and girls gathered around the estate. One of the members got off his bike, walked towards the crowd with a shotgun, and let off one shot into the crowd, but this shot didn't hit anyone the gunman probably wanted it to hit, with it hitting an 18 year old girl who was holding their 11 month old baby. Luckily, nobody died from the shooting, but after this, police really started to increase policing in the region, and with more back and forth violence between- I told y'all, a lot of y'all niggas went last time. Y'all heard what they said? They said this nigga pulled up on a bike. On a bike, huh? Pulled up on a bike, walked through the crowd with a big ass shot in. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. He ain't say he shot that many times, but he on a bike with this cuz. On a bike, man.
Besides, the main suspects started getting arrested and the Mozart to South Kilburn Bulldog started getting a little bit more quieter on the streets of music. HRB's main rapper Boss Belly was having some in-house disputes with another member of HRB which ultimately turned a few main members against him which resulted in a period of a few years with no real popping music from both South Kilburn and HRB until late 2015 when the music sound in London started to switch up to more trap like music this was when one South Kilburn rapper called Cowboy, now known as C-Biz, really started taking off, dropping his most legendary song called The Game's Mind. Younger South Kilburn members also started dropping tunes as well that started doing serious numbers, especially one rapper called Emlo, who really started making some noise on the scene. But on the other side, in 2016, the HRB member would drop one of the biggest songs to come out in UK rap history. A rapper called Fredo dropped his first song called Day in a Hundred and the song blew up from the gate but not long after this Freda was arrested and went jail but soon would be released and when he was released he started dropping hit after hit same thing for C-Biz he was starting to get more and more popular but it wouldn't be long before C-Biz would be stopped on his tracks it was March 9th 2016 when this video was posted all over social media <laughs> So shortly before this video was turned, it was alleged that members from a gang allied of HRB from a nearby area called Church Road had robbed C Business jewelry from him. This video was going viral at the time, but no one expected how quick and deadly the response to this would be. Only a few hours after the video dropped, a couple unidentified people pulled up on Church Road looking for revenge. At the time, there just happened to be a crowd outside the area. This is when a gunman jumped out and sprayed an automatic machine gun into the crowd before jumping back in the vehicle and driving away. Sadly, this... See, them motherfuckers crazy. They said this nigga jumped out of the van and sprayed a semi-automatic in the crowd. That mean he didn't give a fuck about who got hit or none of that. Like, even if he look for a specific person, he tell him give a fuck. You riding that nigga, you still gonna blow. ...to be a deadly attack. But what makes it even sadder is the person that was killed was a complete innocent bystander. who had nothing to do with any of this. C-Biz alongside a few other people from South Kilburn were arrested for the murder. With C-Biz eventually even getting charged for the killing and he went on trial for it. But C-Biz alongside his co-defendant actually ended up beating the case due to lack of evidence. And when C-Biz came out, he started making big noise on the scene again. Dropping a fresh home song and another song called Buzz. This in Big Church Road rapper Nines. Fredo was also locked up at the start of 2017 but was later released after he beat his case. And when Fredo came out, he dropped one of his biggest hits yet with a song called Like That, clearing tens of millions of views, which even started bringing American attention to the rapper. But what a lot of people didn't know was less than a month before this drop, yet again another tragedy occurred due to the feud of HRB and South Kilburn. It was made 26th 2017 around 9 p.m when two masked up men rode pedals from hrb's block the mozart estate to south kilburn it was a hot day so a lot of people were out on the south kilburn estate that day there were around 20 kids playing in the park and boys and girls were enjoying the nice weather and everything was looking like a standard summer's day until two men on pedal bikes came through and started shooting shots into the group of boys the group of boys dispersed after the shots and luckily none of them were injured but sadly, one bullet bounced off a wall on the estate, which hit a 20-year-old girl in the back, sadly killing her literally in front of herds of kids playing in the park who she was close to. A few HRP members got man. arrested for this murder. With it's always the innocent people that get killed when niggas just start shooting for no reason. And they said the bullet bounced off the wall and hit her in the back and killed her. Like, damn, that's crazy. Young boys being charged, but ultimately the case got dropped due to lack of evidence. Around these times was when another gang in West London was starting to break through on the music scene as well. 2017 started seeing a big rise in drill music, creating new artists and also killing a lot of the older artists who couldn't adapt to the new scene. This was when a West London group called 1011 really started to make a name for themselves, dropping banger after banger, especially one of their rappers called Digger D. 1011 are from an area 
area called Nasbrook Road, which is around five minutes away from HRB's block, the Mozart Estate. Both areas have had issues with each other for a long time, with 1011 being linked to the blue side of this divide, with South Kilburn and Stonebridge. And in 2017, 1011 and HRB were really getting into it. And 2017 also proved to be a very hostile year in West London. But in the last couple years, the beef has only got worse and worse. On the 15th of July 2020, a young man who was affiliated to HRB was stabbed to death early in the morning. The person oh, stabbed damn. was close to a few members of HRB, so Shit. HRB members weren't happy about this, especially one member called Billy the Kid. And the day after Billy's friend's death, allegedly he was out for revenge with a few other members from a nearby estate called Surratt. CCTV footage tracked Billy and his friends right from a stolen car from their estate to the rival area of the Stonebridge estate. Once they arrived, they drove near a group of boys and let off some shots, but the group of boys that they were shooting also started shooting back, which resulted in two shots hitting Billy in the back and another person in the car being hit in his leg. The person who was shot in the leg thankfully managed to make it to hospital where he was treated and recovered, but unfortunately Billy wasn't that lucky and he ended up losing his life to the wheels. The shooter of Billy was never found and the craziest thing about this with three of Billy's friends being sentenced to life for his murder. The judge's rationale for this was that if Billy's friends never shot at the group, then the group wouldn't have shot back and killed Billy. Separately, I want to know what everyone thinks of the decision in the comment section, because a lot of people disagree with his verdict. And me personally, I don't really agree with somebody being convicted for a murder they didn't actually commit. And I'm right. How y'all feel about that? How y'all feel about people being uh, convicted of a murder that they did not do at all? That they didn't do. Ain't no evidence that they did it. They told they didn't did it. They not guilty. Like, how y'all feel about that? Like, I feel like this fucked up, bro. For real. Like, you getting blamed for some shit you didn't do. That should be a lawsuit off the bat. Billy's friends who appealed his decision. A month after the murder of Billy, sadly another life was lost in the back and forth feud. It was the early hours of August 12th, and a filly of South Kilburn called Gucci was outside his house in Kilburn. But what he didn't know was a stolen Jaguar was circling his estate. Before he knew it, the members inside the Jaguar jumped out on him and shot at him multiple times. Paramedics were called to his house in an attempt to save him, but sadly a shot to his chest killed him. And did another senseless murder to this out of control feud. A couple months later, HRB rapper Fredo dropped an emotional song dedicated to Billy, which was his first song he posted after the death of Billy. Now we're in 2022, and it looks like this feud has no signs of dying down anytime soon, with two back-to-back -back high profile deaths recently, which have shocked the whole city. One including the oldest brother of a big HRB rapper called Little Dots, who was early in the morning on July the 19th, when and a HRB member called Wu was outside a block of flats in Queen's Park, West London, when a gunman randomly pulled up and started firing shots. One of these shots ended up hitting Wu in the heart. Paramedics were called to the scene, but before they could get there, Wu's friend drove him to a nearby hospital where he was treated. But sadly, the treatment wasn't enough, and he ended up passing away in hospital. A month later, in a similar situation, a rapper from the South Kilburn side called M. Lo was shot to death in Kensington in high street at 2 in the morning. Emma Damn. was a real UK rapping legend, being a big pioneer in the trap music in London, alongside other South Kilburn members like C Biz and F1 back in 2016. So right. we're sad to see how this feud ended up taking his life. Hopefully we start to see this feud slowing down a bit, but with fresh situations going on constantly in Northwest London, it's becoming more and more unlikely. But until then, hopefully everyone stays safe. It's been a boy kid now, then peace out. That's crazy, like, they really, they really turned down there, man, for real. They really walking the shit down, for real. Y'all know y'all niggas be saying, this walking, walking down, walking down, walking down. No, they really walking down up there <laughs> on that thing. They hopping out bikes, hopping out vans, trucks, all that, man. Y'all comment down below. Let me meet this. Y'all comment down below, let me know what y'all think about this, uh, the UK drill, uh, the Northwest versus the West, uh. HRB versus SSK. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, y'all coming down below or hit me up my DMs with some, excuse me, with some UK rappers I can react to. 
They got some hard music that'll make you turn crunk, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we're learning new things, bro. We're doing different stuff, you know what I'm saying? We just, you feel me? We grinding, man. Hey, y'all give me no video ideas so I can keep pushing content for y'all. It's your boy, Big One. Make sure you smash the subscribe button. Click that bell to be notified when I'm uploading a video. Follow me on all my social media, man. Links in the description down below. I said click the bell. Make sure you click the bell. Make sure you like the video. Make sure y'all hit me up in my DMs and let me know what other videos y'all want to see. To the next video, man, it's your boy, Big One, and I'm out. Peace.